Hello everyone, welcome back. Okay, so what we have right here is a cantilever beam um, attached to the wall, and boy is this a short beam. So imagine that it's longer. <laughs> and the cross-sectional dimensions are shown right here for that wide flange shape. Now what do we want to calculate? Well, we want to find the value of Q that's associated with point K, which is right here, um, which is about two inches above the centroid. Also, if the allowable shear stress for the wide flange shape is 14 KSI, determine the maximum concentrated load P that could be applied to that cantilever beam. Okay, what's the maximum load that could be applied to that cantilever beam? Now, with that, I'm going to pause here. I'm going to let you go off into glory and try it on your own. And then after that, you're going to come back and we'll talk about it together. So, Three, two, one. How'd it go? Did you crash and burn? Did you succeed in this? Remember, keep on checking out those videos. Sometimes you have to watch them a second time to get everything from them. And also, check out your units because sometimes what you're missing is not that you don't understand the subject, it's that you simply are using inches instead of feet or feet instead of inches. So please, double check those. Now, the mind, let's jump right into it. So first off, we gotta figure out our moment of inertia, okay? Our moment of inertia. Now we've done this plenty of times before, so I'm not gonna really assume this too long, but just remember what we're doing is we're breaking things up into shapes, we're breaking things up into shapes to figure out what things are. And so in this case, we have that big old flange at the top, the web in the middle, and then the flange at the bottom. Flange top, web in the middle, flange at the bottom. Um, and for all of them, they're nice little rectangles, so it's just 1 12th base height cubed, and we go from there. Parallaxis theorem for some of them. This web is actually centered on the centroid, so it doesn't have one. And we get our answer is going to be 333, or sorry, 335 inches to the fourth. Now, what's the Q associated with point K? Well, we're going to need to find, there's two areas here. Um, and there's a lot of math that's going on with this. However, if you want to simplify it somewhat, we can do that. So we got here that this is 26.3343. So let's jump back to that flange and we'll work that out together. And maybe have a little bit easier time of it. So here is my flange shape. And there's two areas here that I care about. This top area and this area right here. Okay, those two areas. Now, what are their sizes? Because, you know, we have to figure out the centroid and we have to figure out the area. And that's what a lot of that math was doing. So I, I want to break it down for you. So first off, I'll call this one 1 and this one 2. So area 1 is going to be equal to 6.75 times 0.455. Area 2 is going to be equal to, and this is the difficult part. We have a width right here, 0.285, but we don't have a height for that. So the height then is going to be, well, half this distance, so 7 minus 0.455 minus 2 because that's going to give me this between there and there. Okay, so that's 7 minus 0.455 minus 2. Okay, that's area 2. Now what are their centroids? Well, their centroids are simply the distance to, um, to this particular point from the neutral axis. Okay, to this particular point from the neutral axis. So for section one, that's going to be this point right there, halfway in between it. So what we'll probably do is we'll go up seven inches and then we'll come down half its thickness. So y1 is going to be equal to seven minus 0.455 divided by two. And y2, it's a little bit more difficult because I actually have to get in the center of this height right here, which is no fun to write, but we'll get it, we'll figure it out. So that's going to be going, well, my goodness, this is not fun at all. Well, we're kind of going, we're going to go up two inches and then up half of its height, okay? Up half of its height. So this right here is actually its height. So this could be equal to two plus seven minus 0.455 minus two, all over two. Okay, so we have all of that. Now let's go back to the equation you saw a little bit earlier. for Q. And what do we see? We see the exact same things. 
we see the area for both. And then we see their distance from the centroid to their centroid. Distance from the neutral axis to their centroid. So that was not necessarily the simplest thing to do. Um, you definitely had to think about it, but I just wanted to show you where that came from. And now we have 26.33 inches to the third is our Q for point K. So what's our maximum load P going to be? Well, in this case, we have a little bit of an easier time with it. Not super easy, but still an easier time. And the fact that this is going to just be the um, Q for right down smack dab in the center. So we don't have that weird two inches up here that we have to worry about. We're still breaking it up into two areas, the top one and the bottom one. And we're finding first their area and their distance to their centroid. And then the second area, which is going to be, well, seven inches minus 0.45 inches. So I go up and I come down this much to say, that's where I'm starting times its centroid, which is right there in the middle. And we get that's going to be 26.9 inches cubed. So if we know that the max shear stress they can hold is 14 KSI, then we have to rearrange this equation. We rearrange it somewhat and say, okay, well, with that in mind, I look around here and I say that yes, yes. I can rearrange, put my shear stress right here, my moment inertia here, and the thickness, and it's 0.285 inches because that is the thickness right here where it's going to have that max shear stress right in this middle center, right where the max Q is happening. That's the thickness I'm choosing. And I divide that by my max Q. I'll come out to be 49.69 kips. 49.69 kips. Okay. So I think that's everything for this one. Let me see. Yes, it is. We're going to our first group problem. So thank you for listening. I hope this helps you. And I'll see you all next time. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Bye-bye.